Oh, so it's day three, the start of it anyway. Um, I'm waiting to get an Uber. And for some reason, they're all taking absolutely ages. Nine minutes wait for an Uber. It's, I'm so used to in London where there's just one around every other corner. First thing on the agenda, myself and Matty and also Jeff from the Haemophilia Society, plus some other people, I will see who they are when I get there, uh, are doing some radio interview activity things this morning. And um, one of the companies has arranged uh, to do some press coverage during the Congress whilst we're here. So we were asked if we'd like to come and speak on radio. I knew I should have booked it earlier. Pro tip in Glasgow around this time of the morning, 8.15, Ubers are very sparse. Question, who else wears trainers when they go to meetings and congresses? I know generally the rule of thumb for congress is to dress reasonably smart, but I've tried to wear nice proper shoes in the past. My ankles just can't take it. I think a lot of people underestimate how much walking you actually do during these big congresses, whether it's WFH or some other big scientific congress or any congress for that matter. They all tend to be in big conference venues and I think you easily go over your recommended 10,000 steps a day. So I don't know if you are a hemo or a non-hemo, um, let me know in the comments if you wear trainers or smart shoes. Um, and if you all say smart shoes, then I'm just being a, a whiny little... Morning. Oh. Going to the Radisson Red. Radisson Red, that's the one. Look at that, right outside. Go, sir. Thank you very okay, much. No Have a good one. Maddie, give us your best voice for radio. Hi, guys. <laughs> Should I just disconnect this and start this mic? Yeah, it's coughing. And it is now, we're going to travel the world saying people can figure it out, right? Yeah. Yeah, all goes by day. That was not a good idea. It's in the can and the cans are on. Would you guys like a drink of water or anything? That is a great shout. Yeah. It's not the coldest, but it's certainly the wettest. <laughs> <laughs> is water wet? That's the argument. Oh well, yes. Right. Okay. Is it not? It's not, is it? The cut the, the cup it's in is now wet. I don't know. Water, water, is not water in itself, can it be wet? Yeah, you could have a field day with that, couldn't you, Paul? Yeah, don't worry about haemophilia, let's get the real debate going. That's exactly. Yeah, so my name's Luke Pembroke and uh, I am a severe haemophilia B patient. Let's get ready to rumble. Let's get ready, ready, let's get ready, ready, let's get ready to rumble. Watch us wreck the mic, watch us wreck the mic, watch us wreck the mic. Psych. Go check it out and get involved. Brilliant, that was lovely. It's just to Google, Google away. I think, you know, you guys have got. So, just got done doing a little pre recording with Matty. Pretty pointless, really. Like we did one pre recording, we didn't really get to talk much about our experience as individual patients just seemed a bit counterintuitive to go through all this effort to get a load of radio sell-ins about big haemophilia conference and they didn't actually seem to want to hear from any patients this is how these things go people put a load of money into campaigns to raise awareness and then often it falls flat but i just go there and say my piece and hopefully people enjoy it uh, matty did really well as well um, and I think we covered off the questions about treatment, living a normal life, and expressing the importance of things like WFH to raise awareness about places in the world that don't have factor replacement as readily available as we do. So yeah, tried to get some good bits in, but we weren't really afforded the opportunity to do too much. So, oh well, anyway, I'm gonna try and get into some sessions now. Rob is here in the treatment room being an absolute delight. I'll take that. Rob is a qualified physio. He's got his life way more in order than me. <laughs> and he also has severe haemophilia. Pretty cool. Aspire to be him, don't be me, because I just act like an idiot on the internet. And He's I actually doing to, God's work. And I get to <laughs> sit around drinking tea. Yeah. That's NHS workers, but I kid. <laughs> <laughs> that could annoy a lot of people. Cut! Yeah. 
lovely. How's it all going? It's going fabulously, Luke. We're having a fun, great time. We love it. Bria, uh, how much fun are you having writing your blog? <laughs> Okay, so I'm at the Haemophilia Society UK stand with Clive, who is one of our trustees. Hello. And he also does some pretty incredible physical feats. So you compete in an event called the Iron Man. Yeah, Iron Man Triathlon. Okay, so for context, could you just describe what an Iron Man involves? What you have to do? Uh, it's a swim, bike, and a run. Uh, the swim is 2.4 kilometers or 3.8, sorry, 2.4 miles or 3.8 kilometers. The bike ride is 180 kilometers or 112 miles, and then you run a marathon at the end. So it's a bit more intense than your regular triathlon. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. There are different distances, but it's, it tends to be the, the longest distance that most people do. That is an incredible amount of physical activity. So I imagine you've had a lot of questions coming from people who've come over to the stand to ask you, but I'm also curious because I can't run a lot without my ankles starting to flare up. Yeah. And I'm sure you've probably had your experience with joint issues in the past. So I was just wondering, how do you manage those issues when you're competing at such a like high level, intense amount of activity? Yeah, it's, it's taken me a long time to get to where I am. It certainly didn't happen overnight. Um, I have had my problems. Um, I've had times where I didn't run at all. Um, I've had to do quite a lot of strength work to build up my, yeah. um, mainly my left glute, um, okay. having a weakness there. So I've had to do a lot of strength work there. So it's, it's been a, a five, six year project almost to get up to, to doing an Ironman. So yeah. it wasn't a case of something I wanted to do overnight. Um, now I've got to where I am, um, so a few golden rules for me, so I always treat on the days I'm going to run. Yeah. Um, the cycling and the swimming, although intense, doesn't take as much out of me joint-wise, yeah. so I tend to always treat on the days I run, um, and I was discussing with someone before actually, um, I, as a golden rule, I tend not to run two days in a row. Occasionally I will break that rule, but only when I'm near a race and I'm doing a lot of training. So. I will run a maximum probably three times a week. So, for example, awesome. I ran on Sunday. I did a 20-mile run, and I so I, then I, I had a rest day on Monday. Yeah. I won't run on Tuesday, and then I'll run Wednesday and I'll run Friday. So after a long run, I'd have a day, at least a day, if not two off. Um, so yeah, golden rules: treat on the day you run, and. Um, don't two days in a row. Awesome. And by doing that schedule, you you get enough training in to actually be able to get around to doing the marathon yeah, when it comes yeah, to the running section of yeah. the... So that's really interesting. So I tried to pick up running uh, again because I enjoyed doing it, but my ankles got quite bad. And I was trying to run every day, small distance, but I was still trying to run every day. Yeah. And my ankles were just not used to the flaring up. Yeah. And then I tried leaving it a day, but now like I maybe consider doing the... Two days off, yeah, and then, off, yeah. and then, yeah, yeah. like you say, the you swimming, and swimming and cycling. Swimming and cycling is perfect. Um, the other thing I'd say as well, strength work in the gym. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and you don't have to be throwing around heavy weights either. It's it's about sort of functional fitness, building up your glutes, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, any other issues you might have, so um, yeah, uh, don't neglect that, and that goes for everybody. Not exactly. Just feel like, we're not unique in that yeah. sense. Many of you will know people say, oh, I'm going to run the London Marathon next year. And you know what? They end up with a stress fracture around February, March time usually. Mm -hmm. or Because they've done no strength work. Yeah. And finally, the body breaks down. So, um, yeah, it isn't interesting. It's not sexy, but it's what will get you through. <laughs> so it sounds like ultimately it's all about preparation. Yeah, just understanding. everything in life. Yeah, yeah. Preparation exactly. is key. And, yeah, don't expect amazing results overnight. Awesome. Um, so yeah, sounds like it was a, a road to get there, but you've done it. And how many yeah. Iron Men have you competed in now? I've done three, and in July I'm competing in Germany at another race with a German haemophiliac who has also completed an Iron Man one before. Um, and after my talk yesterday, I had someone come and speak to me from South America. A friend of his with Severe A in Brazil has also completed one as well. So that I'm aware of now, there are awesome. three haemophiliacs in the world with Severe A who have completed Iron Man. So there we go. If they can do it. You guys out there can do it too. Awesome. Thanks for taking Thanks. the time to speak to me. And yeah, I, uh, I guess I better get my arse in gear and start doing an Ironman. Should we go for a run? Yeah, let's go now. <laughs> <laughs> so, guess who I bumped oh. into? Ilzat, who I met in Amsterdam for the EHC Youth Workshop. Yeah. And I'm glad he's made it here to WFH. So, Ilzat's from... Kyrgyzstan. 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 So, he's come a long old way to visit us in Glasgow. <laughs> and you have severe haemophilia, eh? Yeah, yeah. Eh? So, yeah. What do you think of Glasgow? Yeah. Good? Bad? Yeah. Good, good. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> I ruined my ex-girlfriend's bed sheets because I got that piercing done. <laughs> oh, I wondered where that was going to go. He's <laughs> Jay from in between us, so everything he says is false. <laughs> Damn it, look, he's not even, he's not even cracking <laughs> one bit. Oh, yeah. Well, the corners are turning. Get it going. <laughs>
<laughs> so we just finished up doing a little video thing with one of the companies that are here at WFH. It was pretty raw, unfiltered. It was just us three basically just dicking about and having a laugh. Um, and now they have the poor job of editing it all. But uh, <laughs> yeah. I just can't believe someone swore on camera. I dropped, I dropped the bastard word in and I was moaning at them to not swear and then it, I just got ahead of myself, I'm sorry. But we tried to do something that was a bit genuine. We've all seen industry videos made before and we just thought <laughs> we'd do a bit of a talk show vibe with just us three sitting down talking about how fun haemophilia is. And what's yeah. more genuine than Luke swearing? <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Manny, I didn't mean it. It just happened. It's, it's never happened to me before, I swear. But yeah, what do you hey. guys think? Was it fun? Would you do something like that again? Yeah, why not? Yeah, uh. definitely. There we go. If you can land this bottle flip first try, I'll give you a, I'll buy you several pints. First try, there's no risk. I'll buy you 10 pints. Oh. All right, Matty, this is how it's done. Oh, it was close though. Okay, second try. No one saw that. Let's get ready, ready, let's get ready, ready, let's get ready to rumble. Watch us wreck the mic, watch us wreck the mic, watch us wreck the mic. Psych. Let's get ready, ready, let's get ready. Watch us wreck the mic, watch us wreck the mic, watch us wreck the mic. Psych!